read verse number seven. We've been talking about growth. We've been talking about development. We've been talking about advancement and maturity. And uh, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, on Friday night, uh, the Lord just dealt with us in such a powerful way um, as we shared uh, concerning the glory that wins. And I believe that there's a newfound uh, glory. There's a new level of glory. There's an advanced level of glory. Um, that's hitting our life today um, that we did not experience yesterday. Uh, that glory that we had yesterday in the month uh, before this time, it was glory for that season. But I don't know whether you all could realize it or not, your, your season has changed. And it's in very important for you not to uh, look at uh, the external things as being indicators of your season change. You're going to have to begin now to sense when your season changes from an internal indicator within you. Because a lot of times the enemy will throw things in front of you all right, to cause you to think as though you're in the same place when God knows you're in a, an entirely different place in the spirit. Amen. You're an entirely different place in your mind. You're an entirely different place in your heart. And the enemy wants you to think that you're in that same old season. I dare you to tell your neighbor, I'm in a new place today. The Bible says that the saints of God, they were praying for Peter. They were talking about Peter. Glory to God. They were on their faces. Glory to God. Crying out for Peter because Peter was in prison. And the Bible says that the Lord sent an angel to get Peter out of there. And Peter starts to walk through the first few wards of that jail. And Peter didn't even know that he was out yet. And sometimes the devil wants you to believe that you're not out. But you better open your mouth and say, the devil is a liar. I'm already out. And I'm not going to act like I'm not out. I'm not going to praise God like I'm not out. I'm going to praise God like I know where I am. And I'm in a place called out. <laughs> Somebody shout, I'm in a place called out. Lord sent that angel to Peter and got Peter out. And he starts to walk through those gates. And he starts to walk, and he thinks it's a dream. He says, oh, I'm not really out. I'm still, I'm still in prison. This is just a temporary thing. This is just, you know, something that's just coming, and something that's going to go, glory to God, something that's just going to come and just fade real quickly. And you better realize this morning, as you advance in this new level of glory, say new level of glory. You see, this new level of glory is a permanent level of glory that God wants to put on your life. God, God, it's a sustaining level of glory. It's an accelerating level of glory where it's never going to leave my life. It's only going to get stronger. It's only going to get greater. It's only going to get mightier. Somebody said, this glory is going to stay on me. Glory to the Lamb of God. He didn't know. He didn't know that he, uh, he was out of prison. But the Bible said once he, once he got a few you know, wars out, that he came to himself and he realized where he was and what God had done. And then he went, God, God, he went to the house where the people were praying at. God, God knocked on the door, said, this is Peter. And they thought, God, God, he was crazy. They thought it wasn't him. They went back and told, God, God, them that Peter was at the door. They said, girl, you sound crazy. He this is why sometimes you can't let glory to God people that are not walking your current season sideline and throw off your level of faith and your level of consciousness as to where you are why because they're going on what your natural looks like and you're going on what you know see you've got to have a knower on the inside of you I said, you got to have a Noah on the inside of you that shows you where you are and who you are, even though sometimes your atmospherics don't look like it. Don't you be fooled today. Don't you be fooled and deceived by the enemy and thinking that you're in that old season and you're talking about God, give me a new season. You're already out. Somebody say, I'm already out. And the only thing God is waiting on me to do is acknowledge where I am. You will never, now listen, you will never be able to draw the benefits of your new season until you acknowledge that you're already there. You cannot eat the fruit of a field that you don't even know you're at. And a field, y'all ain't talking, the fruit of a field that you don't even know you're in. Be good, glory to God because if you don't acknowledge that I'm in a new season in a fruitful place in a large place 
that I'm already in my Rehoboth, then I'm going to act like I'm back there in the desert. I'm going to act like I'm in a place of famine. I'm going to be complaining and murmuring. And that's why sometimes, glory to God, we don't see the fruitfulness of our season because we're complaining and murmuring because we don't even know that we're already out. And the only thing God is waiting on us to do is acknowledge that I'm already in a fruitful place, that I'm already in a good place, that I'm already in an enlarged place. Some of us, I will not be fooled. Glory to the Lamb of God. You've got to acknowledge that you're already in a good place. And when you start to acknowledge it, when you start to acknowledge it, what happens is, glory to God, you begin to realize, glory to God, that everything I need is already around me, is already next to me, is already near me, and the only thing I've got to do is draw from where I am. Beloved of God, wherever you are in the spirit, glory to God, you're going to have to draw from where you are. He said, let thy kingdom come on earth as it's already done in heaven draw from where you are Lord God if the glory of God is on the inside of you if you know you've got a new anointing if you know you got fresh oil on life on your life draw from where you are and command the place that I know I'm in command my external to look like my internal my external to look like my internal I said, I'm going to command my internal, my external to look like my internal. So the first thing I've got to do is, glory to God, I've got to make sure my internal looks, look, looks right. Y'all talk to me good this morning. I said, I've got to make sure my internal looks right. Praise the Lamb of God. We talked Friday night concerning internal positioning. Glory to God. And sometimes we're so concerned about being positioned right on the outside and being positioned right in the eyes of people that we forget to position our heart right. But if you can get your inside right, the songwriter said something on the inside is working on the outside. Are you understanding? If you learn how to make sure your heart's positioned right, your thinking is adjusted right. Your natural world and your environment will start now to resemble what you know has been going on on the inside. And some of you know something great is going on in the inside and you just need your outside to look like what you know your spirit is like. Are you understanding this? But you got to first acknowledge it and you've got to readjust your thinking. Say readjust my thinking. Proverbs chapter 23 verse number 7. Praise God. I love the word. Come on. Do you love the word? Yes. Proverbs 23 and 7. He says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He said, whatever your internal you, whatever your internal mechanisms look like, whatever your engine looks like, whatever, whatever your, 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 your tank looks like, whatever, whatever your, 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 your center of creativity looks like, he said that's what you, you're going to be and that's what your world is going to be. And much of the chaos that we see sometimes in our natural world is not because of the devil, it's because God got our internal, God God is chaotic. Why? Because we let anything in. We let any words in. We let anybody in. Are you understanding this? That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. Are you hearing this? He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is going on in the center of your creativity, your heart, your mind, that's what's going to spill over into your life. Praise the Lamb of God. So one of, one, of, one of the first things I do to make sure, glory to God, that I'm in the right way is, I'm, glory to God, before I bind the devil, I'm going to make sure that my inside look right. Because I want to be rebuking the devil in authorization and not out of some falsehood, glory to God, that I'm in a place that I know I'm not. <laughs> praise the lamb of god bible talks about suffering for righteousness sake then he goes on to say let no man suffer god god say he's suffering because he's a murderer y'all ain't talking in all those things here god sometimes your suffering is because your heart isn't right praise the lamb of god so when i'm going back to do glory to god i'm going back to say god try the reins of my heart god touch my heart make sure there's nothing in my heart glory to god make sure my mind is right make sure my heart is pure and i don't care how anointed i am and what title i carry god father wash me in your blood again 
Thank you, Lamb of God, that I might be whiter than snow. Purge me in his sin. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me your right spirit. Help me to be pure. Help me to forgive. Hell ain't talking. Help me to restore. Help me to be reconciled with my brother. Glory to God. Help me to good thing, good thoughts, glory to God, towards my enemies. Help me to bless those that despitefully use me. Help my heart to be right. God say, help. Somebody say, God, help my heart to be right. See, when you're really ready for victory and you're Mahaya, and you're really ready for breakthrough, you don't care what it looks like. You'll cry on the altar like you're a sinner coming to God. You'll say, God, make my heart right, God. Father, purify my heart. Father, let the yelling talking. Burn it up, God. Burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up. Father, whatever's in me. Songwriter say, if you find anything that shouldn't be. God, take it out. Y'all ain't talking here. Glory to God. I want to be right. Hanamahaya. See, we ready. You are ready for breakthrough. We're ready for victory, God. And you've got to go back and say, God, I just want to be right. If I'm thinking about things the wrong way, make it right. If I'm seeing things the wrong way, make it right. If I'm misunderstanding, God got my season of misunderstanding. People right, and everybody's bothering me, and everybody's irritating me, and I'm so frustrated. God, make my mind right. Don't let me walk around here, God, with a twisted mind. Glory to God, hurting my help. Y'all ain't talking here today. God, I'm misunderstanding people that you sent to help me. God, help my mind. Jesus, glory to God. You don't need no pride. Throw that pride at the feet of Jesus. I'm not going to be prideful. God, I'm coming humble. And I'm saying, God, sometimes there are things in me that I don't even know is working. Sometimes things in me cause me to say things that I don't even want to say. Y'all ain't talking. Sometimes things are planted in my heart and have me acting funny, have me behaving funny, have me snapping off at the wrong people. God, I don't even know how it got in there. But however it got in there, I want you to get it out, out of me. I want to think thoughts that are pure. I want to think thoughts that are lovely. I want to think thoughts that are just. I want to think thoughts that are good report. If it's in me, God, get it out of me today. Because I am determined to have victory. I'm determined to have breakthrough. I'm determined to come to the end of this thing. Glory to God. And I know my, I know my flesh is frail. I know, God, there's no good thing that lies in my flesh. I know, I know, I know. I'm not that anointed to say there's nothing that could creep up on the inside of me. But I've got to go to God every day as I renew in me again. Renew in me again, God, because I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes while I'm sleeping, the enemy plants things in my heart. Through dreams and nightmares and thoughts and images and visualizations. And I wake up and I don't even bind the devil. I don't even rebuke it out of my mind. Lord God, just let us sit in there and meditate. And now I'm feeling things I've never felt before. I'm saying things I've never said before. Why? Because the enemy, Lord God, threw something in there during my night seasons that I did not uproot when I got up. Father, if there's anything in me. Help me to readjust my thinking because I don't want my world to look like a chaotic spirit. Hmm? I don't want my world to look like a chaotic spirit. Some of us, we let people do what they want to do to us. We let them say what they want to do, say to us. We just, we just so happen to have friends and partners and you need somebody around you and you need a homie, you need a roadie, you need a girlfriend. Y'all ain't talking here and you just let them treat you bad and they're abusing you. Why? Because you need people. Don't you know whatever you allow in your life is going to fester in your spirit and you are going to reproduce that same thing that's why the same type of crazy keep coming y'all ain't talking that's why the same type of crazy keeps coming not because the devil didn't not because god didn't bind the last one but because you let that thing fest in your spirit now you're creating new ones y'all ain't talking you're going y'all ain't talking you're looking for crazy because that's what makes you feel good. Y'all going to talk to me here see god god don't you know your dysfunction can become your safety 
It's the only, y'all ain't talking here. It's the only thing you know. You're used to dealing with crazy people. So sane people don't bring you peace. When God sends glory to God, people that are peaceful and have the right spirit, you're not happy because you need to be around a little bit of ratchet. That's what makes you feel good. Your dysfunction sometimes, Lord God, can turn into your safety. When God is trying to draw you out, you're back going back, Lord God. And the Bible said like a dog returning to his vomit. Y'all ain't talking here today. That's what makes you feel good. Glory to God. But Lord God, when you go back to God and say, God, touch my heart, Lord God. Wash me again. Restore, Lord God, your right spirit in me. Lord God, God, the vomit does not please you no more. The slop doesn't please you no more. You'll be like the son in Luke 15. You'll come to yourself and say I'm going back to my right house and I'm not going to ever recreate crazy again uh, somebody say I'm not going to recreate crazy so sometimes we need to readjust our thinking so that we don't create so that we don't create what we know we don't want Sometimes we create what we know we don't want, but we don't do anything to stop it. Come on, hmm? Come on now. You know it's not good for you, but you just can't get enough. Right. Y'all talk to me here today. Don't let the devil shut your mouth today. We know it's not good for us, but we just can't get enough. Why? Because your heart and your mind hasn't been transformed. Uh, uh, is this good to you? Yeah. Yeah. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. He, 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 he says here in Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. Uh, tell your neighbor pay attention to the right thing. See, when you pay attention to the right thing, glory to God, you'll get your focus off the wrong thing, and that's the wrong thing won't satisfy you no more when you pay attention to the right thing. Y'all ain't talking here. You got to pay attention to what you know, glory to God, is purpose. What you know is good. What you know is going to help you. What you know is going to prosper you. You got to pay attention to the right thing. Jesus. He said here, here in Joshua 1 and 8, I got to go. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate therein day and night. He said, fill up your whole day meditating on the right thing, on the right people. Take down some of them pictures. Y'all ain't talking here today. Erase some of those messages in your phone. Glory to God, delete some of those numbers. Y'all ain't talking here today. If you got to walk the different way, glory to God, in the workplace, just not to get the wrong visualization. God said, do what you got to do to pay attention to the right thing. If you can't stomach seeing them, then stay away from them. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? Pay attention to the right thing. He said meditate. Fill your day with meditating on the right thing. That's how you start to get your thinking different. If you say, God, I want to think new thoughts and God, 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 show me something new and speak something new to me. You're going to have to prime your mind first. You will have to prepare your mind. Glory to God, that begins with getting out those old thoughts. Glory to God, and letting God give you new ones. He said, if you meditate on the right things, you don't have to worry about thinking the wrong thing. Did y'all hear what I just said? The, the only right way you can think about the wrong thing is that if God got that wrong thing has to be planted in your mind first. Amen. Amen. The enemy has to have some space to work with. <laughs> y'all ain't talking. I said the enemy has to have some space to work with. So we, we, we throw seeds in there and then you start thinking on it. You can't think on something that doesn't come in your mind, can you? It has to come in your mind first. Y'all ain't talking here. Now, now, let me ask you a question. How are the things coming in your mind? Y'all ain't talking here today. Is it too much TV? Then, Lord God, then back up from the TV. Y'all ain't talking here. How is it coming in your mind? What's consuming your thought life and how is it getting there? Praise the Lamb of God. Then you're going to have to do something, glory to God, that, that shuts off that level, that level of energy, that level of focus. Somebody said, pay attention to the right thing. 
He said, meditate there in day and night. Look in the word, people. He said that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. He said, if you pay attention to the right thing, then you won't have a problem doing what the Holy Ghost says. When you pay attention to the right thing, you won't have a problem being obedient. And some of us are rebellious and stiff-necked, glory to God, and slothful, and glory to God, and utterly disobedient to God because we are not paying attention to the right thing. So we don't know how to listen to God when he does speak. Word of God says in John 14 that my sheep know my voice. And another one they will not follow. You don't know the voice of God because you've spent your entire lifetime paying attention to the wrong voice. So now you don't know when the Holy Ghost is talking or not. You don't know when God's leading you or not because you're paying attention to the wrong thing. See, when you observe to do, when, when, you, when you meditate on his word day and night, and you pay attention to the right things, when God does speak, you say, yes, Lord. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying every time you say, yes, Lord, you're going to want to say, yes, Lord, but you say, yes, Lord, anyway. Sometimes you're not going to want to do it, but you say, yes, Lord, anyway. Are you understanding here? Sometimes I might put you in an uncomfortable or inconvenient place, but you still say, yes, Lord. Why? Because I've been paying attention to the right thing. He, he says, he says, he said, you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. He said, you will make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. He said, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. See, when you have been paying attention to the right thing, then you don't have any room in your mind for fear. Glory to God, because the only thing I do know is the word of God. The only thing I do know is faith. See, 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 fear, fear, fear consumes us when we consume ourselves with focusing on the information that fear brings. That's how we get consumed because instead of, glory to God, when the diagnosis comes, turning to the word of God, we turn to the diagnosis and we meditate on it day and night, day and night, all day long, thinking about it, asking people about it, talking to people about it, y'all ain't talking here, dreaming about it, waking up in the morning about it. So what does fear do? It consumes us. I, 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 he want to tell you, but he says he, he said if you meditate on it, you you you'll make your way prosperous. You'll have good success, right? He said, "Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever thou goest." Are you hearing this? So whatever you fo give your focus to, you'll will whatever you give your focus to will feed off of your energy. You'll end up making the distraction more powerful than your assignment. Some of us have made our distractions powerful because sure enough, God knows it didn't have no power before you started to pay attention to it. Y'all ain't talking. I said your distraction didn't have no power. And see, the enemy deceives you by making you think it had power. It didn't have any power at all. But the focus you gave to it it fed off of your energy because the devil loves a show. He loves a show. He loves when all eyes are on him. Praise the Lamb of God. He is feeding off of you and you're making it strong and you don't even know it. Don't you know sometimes you got to act like you see and Lord God you don't see when you do see some things? You got to act like you don't know when you do know something sometimes. You got to walk past him like you don't even see him in the corner. Y'all ain't talking here today. And he's sitting there throwing up his hands and you're not paying him no attention. Praise the Lamb of God. Why? Because I refuse to give my distraction more power than I do my assignment. I want to give my assignment power. I don't want to give my distraction power. The G, they were on the boat. Jesus was on the bottom of the boat. The storms come. The Lord is sleeping. Why? Because he understood that what he gave his attention to will have power. They wake him up. They had to wake him up. He was not affected by anything going on around him. And you're going to have to learn how to be so focused on your assignment that you're not concerned about what's going on around you. You're paying attention to the right things, to the right things.
Exodus chapter 3, verse number 2. Exodus 3, verse number 2. Moses had been called out of Egypt. He had spent years on the backside of the desert. He is coming to the end of that level of process, right? And at every level of process is a new level of assignment. I said every, at the end of every level of process is a new level of assignment. And if you truly believe that you're coming to an end of a process, then you need to position yourself for a new level of assignment. Because there's a new level of glory that is introduced at the end of every process. Because God doesn't have you to go through anything just for nothing. <laughs> when I come to the end of this thing, you better watch out. Y'all ain't talking here. Because there's a new level of assignment that's going to hit my life. Tell your neighbor, you better watch out. If you're expecting me to act the same and speak the same things and do things the same way, and if you're comfortable and if you're familiar with me, your feelings going to be hurt. Because at the end of every level of process is a new level of assignment. Praise the Lamb of God. So Moses coming to the end of that process, right? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in Exodus 3 and 2. In a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold the bush was burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. He noticed it right. He noticed it. He noticed it. He noticed it. Somebody said notice. And Moses said I will now turn aside. And see this great sight. Which the bush is not burnt. Why the bush is not burnt. Now 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 now. If you want to get the attention of God, and if you really want a new level of glory and a new level of assignment, you're going to have to do like Moses did. Moses saw the bush was burning. He noticed that it wasn't consumed. He saw that there was something different about this thing than quite possibly was about things that he had seen before. You're going to have to look in your life and look at the season and say, God, there is something, something different about this thing. And that's going to come by, by you positioning yourself right, getting your heart right. Because when you get your heart right, you start to see your season in a different light. Bible said Moses turned aside. He said, I'm going. He says, he said, I'm just not going to notice this thing, but I'm going to turn and give it my attention. And the Bible says, when the Lord saw that he turned, not that he noticed it. Y'all ain't talking. The Lord saw that Moses stopped and observed the difference. Then God begins to speak to him. And what does it God say? Take off your shoes for the place where you are is holy ground. When God saw that Moses paid attention, y'all, God says, all right, now I can give you a new level of assignment because you're just not walking through this season like I'm not doing nothing. Oh, I just said something because some of us are walking through this season acting like God is doing absolutely nothing. And God does not like to be ignored when he's really up to something good. <laughs> don't you know sometimes you have to see a good God even when you don't see good things? Oh, let the church say amen. Sometimes you have to see a good God even when you don't see good things. Listen. Listen, I can't give you all of this. Just come back next Sunday. But I, I do want to give you one more scripture. Can I give you one more? First yeah. Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. This is why you've got to make sure your heart is positioned right. 
that I'm not so focused on trying to position my outside when my inside is incorrectly positioned. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen, neither ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So sometimes the outside isn't going to look like what's already prepared. Sometimes the outside is not going to look like what is already manifested, what is already fulfilled. He says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. See, this is the way you're going to have to act. And I'm done. This is the way you're going to have to act. Have you ever... When you're a child, or me, maybe even as an adult, played hide and go seek. Like, like, you know, like hide and go seek. Maybe one day later, Tara and I will play hide and go seek. <laughs> but in the game of hide and go seek, you knew the person was in the house. You just didn't know where they were. <laughs> so you went from room to room looking in closets and looking under. see sometimes your process is just in you going from room to room and sometimes it's important that you go from room to room to room because sometimes you need to know what's in your house <laughs> sometimes you need to know what's there but then you come to the point where you do find what you were looking for. So, so, so when the Bible says, I have not seen, neither ear heard, the very simple way of understanding that is, is, is already in the house. I'm just going to have to walk out the process of finding out where it is. Bible says, was that Luke 15, that a woman knew she lost a coin in the house. She didn't look on the outside for the coin. What does she do? She lit a candle. She lit that candle. See, that candle, the Bible says in Revelations, Lord God, our, our heart, our spirit is a candle of the Lord. See, when you light the candle of the Lord in you, you'll be able to see things in a new way. And some of us can't see the promise that's already in our world because we're still walking around with a dark heart. Come on, Pastor. Yes. You get that heart right and get light back in your heart, you'll see what's already been prepared. The Bible said, but, but, but he reveals those things unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Right. Y'all ain't talking here. Y'all see that? All things, whatever you need to find, if you'll pay more attention to the glory of God in you and the spirit of God in you, you'll find all things. And then the Bible says in another passage of scripture that you'll know what he's freely given to us as he's freely given to us all things. Are, are you hearing what I'm telling you? Listen, people. You're in a new level of glory. There's a new level of power. That's on your life today, in your world today. You just need to recognize it. Right. Let's get our hearts right. Come on, let's stand. Get our hearts right. Readjust our thinking. Be very conscious, beloved.